Kia ora and welcome into our America's Cup preview show. I'm Sheree Kinnear, AUT's sailing professor Mark Orams joins me as we look ahead at Prada Cup round robin at three races. So American Magic's Patriots, it's still in the repair sheds, which leaves Ineos Team UK and Luna Rossa with two races this weekend, one today and one tomorrow. The Brits, they have four points on the points table, so they only need to win one of the two races to progress through to the Prada Cup final. Whereas Luna Rossa, they need to win both and then force a tie break, which is probably a good place to start, Marco. Could you explain to me what happens in that situation? Yeah, sure, Cherie. Um, so it follows the standard protocols with yacht racing where you have a tie. The way that that tie is broken is who won the last race. So uh, that in this case is uh, pretty simple because Luna Rossa needs to win both races this weekend to be able to tie the scores. And therefore the tiebreaker would see them go through to the challenger final because they will have won the last race. So if the Brits do win today, they obviously they, they progress straight away into that final. And we'll get a bit more into that soon about what that sort of means for tomorrow's race. But looking at today, have you had a chance to look at the conditions? What the, what's the wind looking like out there? Yeah, really excited about the conditions today. It looks right in the mid wind range. And so that means the boats are really ripping. Um, no chance of, uh, of major sort of sit downs, that kind of thing. Uh, and nothing sort of way over the top that could cause risk of, of major calamity or cancellation of racing. So at the moment on the course, we've got about 15 to 16 knots and all of the models are in alignment. They say that we should see somewhere between 14 and 18 knots today. The other thing that makes that really exciting is that we saw both Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli and Enios Team UK in similar conditions last weekend and they were very evenly matched. So it means we're going to have a tight and exciting race today. Is this what you would call an ideal day for racing? Are these the perfect conditions? I think there are perfect conditions from a sailing perspective, yes. Um, the other thing that makes them really interesting and exciting is that it's an offshore breeze, and so that means you tend to have some oscillations in the wind. So that means the wind is shifting in direction, and also a little bit, but not as much as we've seen last weekend, but a little bit up and down in velocity as well. So that means that there are passing opportunities for the trailing boat, it means that the sailors have to keep their heads up and out of the boat and make good decisions in positioning the yacht in max, for maximum advantage according to those wind changes around the racetrack. So uh, it's not just going to be a boat speed race. We're going to see a need to make really good decisions on the race course to be able to be successful today. That race today is set to get underway at four o'clock. You can hear live commentary on iHeartRadio and Gold AM with PJ Montgomery and his commentary team. Now, if NES Team UK do win today, they progress straight into the Prada Cup final. Does that mean tomorrow, technically, the teams can say, hey, we don't see the point of racing and we don't need to race? That's, a, that's an option that the race uh, regatta director Ian Murray has given to them. And so either team has the option of saying, actually, we don't want to race on Sunday. That's in the scenario that Enios Team UK wins the race today. Um, however, both boats could decide that even though it's a dead rubber, as it were, that they might both want to race for the additional race practice that it will give them. And that, I think, something that would be seriously considered by the teams. Firstly, if it's Luna Rossa that needs to race next weekend against Patriot, the restored Patriot and American Magic, an additional race under their belt's a good thing for them. Remembering that uh, they've only had, the Americans have only had four races under their belt. So a couple races more for Luna Rossa will be something that'll help them. Similarly, as far as uh, if it is Ineos that goes through to the Challenger final after today, they've got quite a long break where they're able to do some refinements and testing on their boat, but the long break between their next race and the race today. So they may find it's an advantage, even though they don't need to win it, to have another race tomorrow. So if it was me, I'd certainly want more racing under my belt. And something else that's come from American Magic capsizing last week and changed to the schedule is our ghost races. We're going to see some ghost races after today's official race. What is a ghost race? Yeah. What, does it, what does it mean? Do the teams get points? Well, I've been involved in this sport for, uh, for over 40 years, Cherie. First time I've heard of a ghost race. <laughs> it sort of makes you think of the Flying Dutchman and all the old ancient stories about, uh, about things and legends around uh, the nautical traditions. But uh, I guess they're called a ghost race because American Magic and Patriot obviously is not going to sail today or tomorrow. Uh, and so in order to bank the point from that race, the, the teams need to start. 
And so Ian Murray has said, all right, once you've started and shown that you're capable of racing, we will then abandon the race after the start. And so that, um, that's what the race director has decided. Both teams have agreed on that. So that's what we're going to run with. But it's a, a new feature for me, ghost racing. Does it also, I guess, show that the boats are actually able to get out there on the course? Because if something would happen uh, in today's race and the Ineos, for instance, couldn't race in this so-called ghost race, they won't get the points. Is that how it works? Yeah. And so that's, I suppose, a risk for them uh, in that situation or for either team for that matter. But I think more importantly for them, and one of the reasons they would have agreed to this is that the pre-start is a really important thing to practice. Uh, and it's uh, something that no team actually has really nailed down yet. They seem to be struggling a little bit with their decisions about time on distance. Uh, and when I talked to Freddie Carr from Ineos Team UK about that, he sort of explained that the challenge that they have is that while they have very good onboard computing and that predicts the time that it'll take them, either ETA if you like, at the start line, these boats accelerate and decelerate so quickly with very minor changes in the wind strength that it's very hard for their computer or for them to predict how long it's going to take them to make it to the start line according to the timing for the entry. So they're getting that not right. And if you don't get it right, particularly if you're early, you can get a penalty. If you're late, it sometimes exposes you to your opponent nailing you and potentially getting a penalty. So the teams want to practice more pre-starts. So these ghost races give them the opportunity to do that. Luna Rossa, they'll be feeling a bit of the pressure today, knowing that they have to win today's race and tomorrow's race to make it through to that final and avoid having to race through the semis. Although I guess pros and cons of racing through that, obviously you get more race practice or you get a bit of a break. But there's been a bit of talk uh, with some improvements and changes that they've made to their boat, particularly around the foils. Talk me through a bit of that, Mark. What have you seen or what do you know and what are you expecting to see on their boat today? Mm, yeah, well, firstly, in the Luna Rossa, remember, Luna Rossa has Jimmy Spittle. And uh, if there's any sailor that likes the must-win scenario, backs against the wall, it's the fiery Australian skipper. So uh, they won't um, shy away from having to win today. In fact, I think that Jimmy Spithill will relish that kind of opportunity. What they have done, or at least have rumoured to have done, of course they won't confirm or deny, is to have put on their final set of main foils. Now, all the teams are allowed six sets of foils, and it depends on who you talk to as to how many have played all six. The general consensus has been that Ineos Team UK has used up all six of their foils. So they're on their final set and they started round robin run with their final set. The other thinking is that Luna Rossa started with their fifth set, their penultimate set, and they were holding back their final set, which presumably they think is slightly faster, until the Challenger final. Now they've decided to actually break that card out early so that they can maximize their chances of going directly to the Challenger final as opposed to having to go to the, the knockout semi-final next weekend. What are some of the rules around when they can make these changes and to what extent? Can they go back onto earlier foils? Are there some regulations around that? They can, but they must declare all of the equipment that they're going to use on the Wednesday before the racing starts. So today's Saturday, so last Wednesday, the teams all had to bring the measurers in and say, here's all the equipment we're going to use. The measurer signs that all off and records it all. And that's what they must be committed to for the remainder of this particular series. So that's round robin three and four in this instance. So as we look to the semi-finals next weekend, on Wednesday of next week, the semi-finalists, who will be, we know, American Magic, and whoever is the loser out of this weekend's racing will have to declare what equipment that they're going to use for the semi-finals and then they must use that throughout the semi-finals they can't change so it's quite an important decision uh, because you're looking at the wind you're looking at the forecast you how reliable are they how much do you want to orient yourself around a forecast that may or may not come true given what we know about Auckland and how changeable the conditions are. So um, one of those really important calls for the teams to make is what equipment are they going to race with? And they have to make that decision basically three days before the race starts. I guess the golden question is, is who do you predict to come out on top today? I've, I, yeah, it's always a hard one because these boats are very evenly matched. We learned that last weekend. Remember that the first race between Luna Rossa and Ineos Team UK, Luna Rossa was winning, and then we had that very bizarre wind shift and the race got abandoned. Then the rematch, Luna Rossa was winning until Team Ineos UK, who were very close, man manufactured a pass with picking some really good wind shifts at the top of the course up under North Head, and they managed to hold on and defend to the finish. So these boats are very evenly matched, 
And I think it's going to come down to who can control the race from the start. So the pre-start and winning the start becomes really important. So I know I'm kind of sitting on the fence here, but I think it, I could, need an answer. it could go either way. <laughs> I hope, I hope the Luna Rossa wins because I'd okay. love to see another race for sure tomorrow. And, uh, and that, of course, livens it up. Yeah, we'll say from a spectator's perspective, that's the best way it could go. As you can see on the points table, Ineos Team UK, they are on the top with four wins. Luna Rossa on two, and American Magic, of course, at the bottom, not being able to get any wins before their capsize last week. The two races t today scheduled at four o'clock and tomorrow at four o'clock between Ineos Team UK and Luna Rossa. Their ghost races will be happening in between then, and then hopefully after tomorrow we'll get a result. We'll know who's going through to the final and who is going to race. American Magic in the semis next weekend. So you can hear live commentary of today's race on iHeartRadio and Gold AM from PJ Montgomery and his commentary team. Well that's it from us, Cherie Kinnear, Mark Orams, thanks for joining me. Mark will stay with you in our live blog on the NZ Herald website answering all your questions before the race. He'll be with you throughout as well and afterwards and then be back here with Matt Brown and Phil Robertson for our post-race news show Beyond the Cup.